Hey everybody, Haku here with the second half of Magical Girl Raising Project, or Maojo Juikse Geikaku, Queen's Chapter 5, A Nostalgic Gift. Uh, sorry that this is a week behind. I missed last week's because I went to record last week's, and about like half a page in, um, my computer froze. So, uh, yeah, that kind of derailed last week's. So, uh, I tried again and eventually just had to be like, okay, this is a wash for this week. We'll get to it next Friday. We'll get them eventually. So, uh, yeah, that's why this is a week behind, why I missed out on a week. So sorry about that, but let's continue reading. I thought the first half of Chapter 5 was really good. I really liked it. I think my favorite thing about it is this sort of concept of these characters from previous arcs um, teaming up to save Snow White, like, characters, like, seeing, like, um, Flet a little, not as much, but specifically Uluru, Mana, Fall, char or characters from completely different arcs coming together to save Snow White, and they gave me, they gave me the hint that we could have those characters team up with Snow White and go after Pithy, and it just makes me think... Come on, you you got it. You can't just hint that and not do it. Like now, it just makes me really, really want Uluru and Mana and Fall to survive and to save Snow White, so that like that's good content. I want to see them go after Pithy. I want to see them team up, like and work together. So again, it's gonna it's gonna hurt if we get robbed of that, because that that would be such good content. But either way. Let's uh, start reading. We are at page 14 here of um, chapter 5. So we're starting with Fle. We just got finished with a Shadow Gale section, which again just continued to show just how scary of a villain Buck Buck is. But uh, from Fle's point of view now. Inside the tent, there was Dark Cutie and Princess Deluge. Dark Cutie was still sitting and staring at the floor, whereas De er, Deluge was just pondering in the corner. Um, from the outside of the tent, they heard a voice. Excuse me, may I borrow this tent privately for a moment? said Fle as she entered the tent. Dark Cutie stood up, not glancing at anyone as she walked past Fle, exiting the tent. Before that, however, Fle stopped Dark Cutie. Would you mind watching the entrance for me? Make sure no one comes in, Dark Cutie. Dark Cutie nodded and exited the tent. Deluge didn't respond. She only stood up and glanced at Fle with a dark look in her eyes before exiting the tent. When the coast was clear, Fle placed the magical phone on the armrest of her wheelchair. From there, a stereoscopic image appeared. I detect magical girls outside the tent, Pone. They're only watching, so no one comes in. We're alone here. They won't listen in. More importantly, what did you want to talk about? Fall stopped bobbing around and lowered his head. Please, Pone. Save Snow White, Pone. You said that a while ago. I don't care what happens to me, Pone. Now that's interesting. The two stared at each other for a while, not speaking for a few second er for a few seconds of silence. This is also something I love too. Seeing the reunion of Fall and Fle because the two of them, of course, knew each other from restart which is insane, and I hadn't even put that together until, like, the reunion happened last time. Fle felt sympathy, sacrificing everything for the sake of rescuing a wonderful magical girl, giving up everything so that the one person they care about can be saved. Fle and Fall. They shared those qualities. Fle felt sympathy for Fall. She couldn't seem to ignore that side of Fall, and she didn't think it was in her place to judge when a person wants to do everything for the person they care most in the world. Quickly now. Time runs short. Is there something specific you wanted to tell me? asked Fla. There's something Snow White entrusted to me, Pon. Oh? I'm telling the truth, Pon. I'm frustrated that Snow White is suffering, Pon. I know she's suffering, Pon. She took on so many responsibilities, Pon. And what's this your er this thing you're referring to? Your memories, Pon. Fla half expected this answer. It would certainly mean things lined up the way she thought it did. Knowing this information satisfied Fle, but she kept a straight face. And what of it? I'm not supposed to give it back, Pone. To be honest, I don't really like all this secret keeping myself. Personally, I think it's better if you have it back. I'm sure you'll be able to operate a, er, a lot better with everything intact, Pone. I don't know, because Fle was super, super evil in Limited. I also think that's a good decision. I think Shadow Gale maybe made the right decision. 
The way she said it made it sound ironic or sarcastic, but Fla was really er really was glad that Fall was willing to return her memories. Fla somersaulted or er, Fall somersaulted three times, scattering the colorful ribbons all over the dark tent. Fall, however, had mixed expressions. He wasn't sure if this was a good sign or a bad sign. He became serious. If I return the memories, I want you to promise that you'll save Snow White, Pone. Do you trust me, Fall? I trust you, Pone. Fla slightly widened her eyes. Unconsciously, a smile formed in her face. There's not many people who would say that they trusted Fla. Even if they said it outright, Fla could often see through it and know which ones really did trust her. That's why Fla knew that Fall was telling the truth when he said he trusted her. She was used to dealing with people who completely distrusted her and, and are against her. But now Fall, a cyber fairy, had complete trust in Fla. Fla nodded. All right, Fall, I promise. I'll save Snow White. However, with that promise, I have to tell you that she comes second in priority. I know, Pon. It's okay, Pon. Your priority is Shadow Gale, right, Pon? Fla's eyes instinctively widened. She gripped her armrest tightly. Her breathing began to unsettle, until she took a deep breath and controlled herself. She felt sweat begin to trickle down her head. She placed her finger on her lip, almost biting it, before realizing what she's doing. And what makes you think that? I was there when she knocked you in the head with a wrench, Pone. Ah, so you were. Makes sense, of course. That was the place where Fla truly revealed the most about herself, that she would do anything for Shadow Gale. Fall would have been there. Perhaps that's why Fall trusted Fla. At the very least, he trusted Fla's willingness to sacrifice herself for Shadow Gale's sake, for the sake of someone you cared about. That was a trait they both shared. And I love this. Not only is it something that she can use to understand Fall, but she's realizing that Fall has used the same thing to understand her. In that case, go and open the battery pack on my magical phone, Pone. Fluff flipped over the magical phone and opened the cover where the battery should be. However, inside there were no batteries. Instead, there was a glowing piece of candy that glowed with a variety of colors at once, like a rainbow. Fluff picked it up. She looked up at it as it shined bright er as it shined brightly. Its colors weren't consistent, sometimes changing from one to another. It was beautiful, but also rather creepy. This is familiar, said Fla as she eyed the outside of the tent. Something wrong, Pone? No, you don't have to worry about that. More importantly, can your magical phone roam without batteries? Oh, it's always been that way, Pone. I don't really know, nor do I care that much. Might er might be because of how I am, Pone. So of course it's probably something that um that Keek did, and it would be interesting if that is somehow tied into how Keek will eventually come back from the Shadow Realm. Um, but, uh, I see. Well, that's useful, said Fla. When Fla was staring at the outside of the tent, she was actually staring at Deluge, as this was similar to the kind of candy that Deluge consumed, the same type of candy as Bluebell. I have a guess, but what should I do with this, asked Fla. Lick it, Pone. Fla slowly licked the candy. When her tongue touched it, it instantly melted like foam. Fla anticipated a sour taste, but it was actually tasteless. I see. It's easy enough to understand. That's right, Pone. There was no headache, no intense flash. The memories just came back. As simple as that. There doesn't need to, er, there doesn't seem to be a sense of discovery. However, Fla grasped her fist tightly. There was a similar, er, there was a similar experience a long time ago when she recovered her memories during the game. In that game where Fall was playing as her guide, she had remembered all the impure sh things she had done in the past. Fall looked up at Fall. My memories. Did you also? Only what Snow White saw in Shadow Gale's heart, Pone. I see. I suspected that Shadow Gale had something to do with it. I guess it confirms it. I just wanted to know. Fall bobble, er, bobbed again, the colorful ribbons popping out. Fla looked down at her closed fist, resting in the armchair. I'm going to save Shadow Gale. I know you will, Pun. Fla, er, Fla then looked up at Fall, who looked back with his usual expressionless smile. And it's sad, because she's vowing to save Shadow Gale, but because she has her memories back, Shadow Gale failed to save her from herself. And I'll save Snow White, too. It's a promise, right, Pun? <laughs> I've really put myself in a corner, haven't I? I'm being completely obedient, vulnerable, and honest, and just blurting out everything I'm thinking about to you. 
That's really troubling for me. Vulnerable. I don't think you're being vulnerable, Pwn. Oh, trust me, Fall. I'm being a lot more vulnerable than I'd like er, than I'd like myself to be right now. Let close the battery case in the magical phone. Regardless of whether or not it needs an actual battery, it's better to keep it closed just in case. Then Dark Cutie entered the tent. Flaw looked up abruptly. Well, that's a rather surprising entrance. What's wrong, Dark Cutie? Glassy Ann wants to talk, said Dark Cutie. Ah, let her in. Glassy Ann then went inside the tent. No, no expressions, just fallen shoulders, hanging hands, and a rather slumped back. All signs point to her being tired of the job, and she's not bothering to hide it in front of Fla either. The exhaustion was obvious, because now Glassy Ann had twice the work. She had to handle the logistics as well as scouting. Without Mechan, a lot of what used to be her work was handed over to Glassy Ann. Flo already knew what was inside Glassy Ann's head. She didn't have to be psychic to find out. She wanted to go home to her store and make sweets again. Still, Glassy Ann knew her job wasn't done. What's the matter, Glassy Ann? asked Flo. Um, well... Remember the magical girl that the examiner brought back from Puck Manor? What was her name? The Liar. Yeah, well, there's club soldiers watching her in places she doesn't even notice. Aces and three-face cards. And you found them? I guess. If I found the ace, that should mean the lower ones weren't hiding nearby. It would make sense to watch over her with club shuffling. After all, when you're trying to muster an army, you don't want a sudden spy or stranger to ruin the whole plan. Flood didn't really want to bother on either side. Uh, now's not the time to make enemies of anyone. Is Deluge out there? asked Fla. Uh, uh, no, I think she left somewhere. Should I find her? No, she'll come back. Ah, okay. Glassy Ann? Yes, hello? Take, er, take an open tent and rest, would you? Sleep. Take a breather. Get some rest and relaxation. If it's noisy, go find earplugs. Michan once made a couple, right? Oh, it's fine. I don't mind at all. Besides, there was an announcement that we'd be moving out soon anyways. Your place isn't the battlefield. Dark cutie, find Deluge and bring her here. Please. I have an errand for her. Understood, said Dark cutie in the distance. Fall. There's something I'd like to talk about, but, er, but let... Where are you going, Pwn? We're going to have, er, we're going to have to visit some bad guys. Okay. And now we're going to seek you, Angel Hamuel. All right, let's see where we're at. All right, everything looks fine. And we are at page 21, the very tail end, it looks like. And we're at CQ Angel Hamuel. How does it look? Hmm? Also, I just want to say, before I move on, that segment was really, really, really good. Like, it just it reminds me of why Magical Girl Raising Project is so good. That was a really good segment. Uh, but either way, let's move on to CQ Angel Hamuel. How does it look? Hmm? How does it look? Well, let raised her right hand. The two heart shuffling slot er stopped fanning her. She fixed the decorations on her horns, the ones that were a bit messed by the winds of the fan. With so many people watching her in camp, let's become a bit more sensitive about her appearance, even if she's riding in a chair carried by shufflins. Hamuel didn't mind that, since she should know when they'll be attacked. Doesn't look like anyone's playing out there, hmm? Huh? Playing? Well, yeah, it's wartime. I doubt people would be playing around. This is Puck Puck we're talking about. If they can't play with Puck Puck, the servants will be decide or er, the servants will decide to play with each other. Having fun is the utmost priority in the Puck faction. If they're not having fun or er, fun among themselves, it means they're still Puck er, it's still possible for them to see Puck Puck. Meaning we haven't attacked seriously enough. Oh, you know. That might be a good point, because Puck Puck relies on her, like, visually being seen for her power to work on people. And that power wears off the more that she's not seen by them. So, if they're not, like, bored of listening to exactly what Puck's orders are, if they're not, if they're still listening to exactly what her orders are, that means that they have been seeing her more recently. They've been seeing her enough for them to not sort of have the power start to wear off and have them start to question, like, why are we following these orders? That's actually really smart. Is that really something we should put into consideration? Would you put the fact that I always sit in these vintage chairs into consideration of your plans, hmm? Regardless of how you feel, or you yourself feel about them? 
Well, you know me, I'm just a lowly servant, trying the best with the hand I'm dealt with. Your humility doesn't sound humble at all. That's because it was sarcasm. I wonder if now is the right time to be sarcastic, hmm. Perhaps I expected too little of you. Clearly you have a well-thought-out plan if you have the time to be sarcastic, hmm? Er, well, hmm, do you not? My apologies. And we all had to stop the ritual as soon as possible. There's been too many delays with logistics and troop movements lately. The gate began to open. The reason for the delays is due to Hemuel not wanting to move in without prior information. She'd been waiting for the diamond shuffling to install cameras inside the caverns where it's safe, expecting traps and ambushes. You're being a bit too paranoid, hmm? Better, er, better that than get ambushed out of nowhere. If I know the enemy's movements before they set up, I can prepare. I can find out their tactics as well. Hemuel, has anyone told you that you're not very good at hiding what you think, hmm? I'll take that as a compliment of my honesty. Hemuel waited and waited, and when a report came in that a light was pointed from the deep end of the valley, Hemuel was relieved. However, the communications with the shuffling was suddenly cut off. Was there an accident? Come in, hello? Let raised her eyebrows. What happened? A couple of shuffling twos just came back from scouting. Seems there's a magical girl sitting alone in the entrance to the ruins. One magical girl? Yeah, Puck Puck. She seems to be sitting there alone on a chair, placed just in front of the entrance past to the ruins. Multiple shuffling twos with long-range vision confirmed it. The other, er, the other started running back here. Let arranged her decorations again. She exhaled. Do you think this is Puck Puck playing a game, or is this serious strategy? A play? Probably. I don't think this is something a normal strategist would think of. It's certainly strange to have the bulk of your defense in the back line and only leaving one person, albeit one very powerful person, as the lone defender outside. It's abnormal, said Hamuel. This doesn't seem like Puck Puck's way of thinking. Someone else is planning this strategy. Let began to think. We should be careful not to do anything rash. Don't use any explosives or blasting attacks to attack the ruins. It might damage the device. Shattering that may cause world-breaking destruction. The mention of damaging the device made ha Hamuel unnerved. The device was ancient and something she can't seem to grasp, an existence as powerful as the three sages themselves. Knowing that, Let may not be exaggerating when she said it might be world-breaking. Understood. But I still can't shake the idea that this strategy doesn't fit with Puck Puck's way of thinking. Is she really taking orders from another strategist? Just what is she doing, hmm? Hamuel nodded as... er nodded. She began giving order to the orders to the Shufflins. Just then, Hemuel was contacted by the Ace of Clubs. This was the group that was watching over the Examination Division Magical Girls. Alright, and we're ending there, so I guess next time we'll finally get our meeting between Let and Hamuel in uh, Fle's group. So, that's, uh, that's interesting. That, that was good, too. It sets us up for more stuff coming in the future, just like the end of the last section did. But I thought that section with Fle and Fall was incredibly good. That was really, really great. Uh, so a bit of a short one this week. Next week we'll be kicking off Chapter 6. So, uh, yeah, ending it here. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow on Twitter if you want. If you want to link to, a disc or to the Discord server, ask and I'll give you one. And if you would like to help support the channel to keep things going by helping on Patreon, it is patreon.com slash haku of the tubes, or a link will be in the description. Either way, that is it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.